Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Bar with your host, me, comedian Danny Johnson, where I talk to your favorite dry bar comedians. Uh, today, very special guest, Damon Sumner and his special just dropped Chocolate in the Sun. What is it? Yeah, that Chocolate is- in the Sun, baby. <laughs> and um, before we go into your special, first, thanks for thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. But you and I... We, I don't remember whether we've worked together. I know we've certainly met before, we but did, it we is did one gig together in Florida. Okay, and it's been years. Yeah, yeah. So it's good to see you, man. I see you all over the place. We'll get into that in a little bit. But um, I had a comment made on one of my previous episodes of this. To you know, I guess someone stumbled across. I'm like, what the heck is Dry Bar? So real quick, Dry Bar is uh, clean comedy specials by a company out in Provo, Utah, and uh, they have millions and millions of followers, and then. Um, they produce them out there and then distribute them. But uh, so Damon, yours just got published. For those that don't know you, I know you. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in comedy. I know that's a pretty uh, common question on a podcast, but yeah. I don't even know that. Sure, oh. sure, sure. Well, one, uh, good to see you. Appreciate you having me on for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the nutshell is um, I moved to Atlanta. And in um, 2009, and just the background for 10 seconds is a lot of times, not all the time, but many times you talk with comics and their origin story. A lot of times it's based in their upbringing. My dad was listening to Pryor. My mom was right. watching Carlin or whatever. You know, we watched Leno and Letterman, blah, blah, blah. I had none of that uh, for just reasons of like just our family makeup right right uh, i remember when kings of comedy come out my mom my mom was like yeah we're not listening to any of that in this house <laughs> and so when we fast forward we moved to uh atlanta after college me and one of my best friends who's another great comedian based here in atlanta uh named david Perdue. Um, and so this is the life of a family. I tell you what, right now, just <laughs> out here trying to be professional. You got people walking behind your back. Excuse <laughs> me. Uh, and so, and so, long story short, a friend, we're cutting up, we're having a good time, and he's like, "Man, y'all are hilarious. Have you ever thought about stand up?" Mm. And I'll be honest with you, Danny, I had never thought about stand up. I had never really thought about comedy as a profession. But me and David, we signed up for open mic together. Uh, October 27, 2010 at the Laugh Disco Lounge here in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. And as, as cliche as it may sound, after that, Mike, it was like, oh, yeah, the rest is history. It was a sure. after that. And we haven't stopped since. So you get um, hooked. People don't know you get hooked. And even if you do poorly, it's a thing in you, you know, and, until you get better and better and better. It doesn't matter. You can bomb. You're like, I'm doing it again tomorrow night. 100%. Yeah. I, I've never done Laughing Skull. I've done. Remember the funny farm used to be there too. And like yeah, a yeah. <laughs> some sort of con I've done the punchline. I've done uh funny farm, but never the laughing skull. I need to get up there. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good time. When you was this your first special ever filmed, or did you do do another one before this? Just the first one. Okay. So you've been in the game for so long. What how do you sit down and go, all right, because you know, dry bar comes to you and go, look, it's gonna be 25, 30 minutes or whatever. You know, how do you even begin to kind of you have way more material than that you know what's your thought process Mm. to create that set i'll be honest with you so so for clarity i have a album that's just audio yeah um and that came out that came out last uh last march last march last april and so they they both were filmed or they were both uh recorded we'll say um one month apart so as i'm processing the potential uh, timeline for the recording and for the releasing, not really knowing, to be honest with you, when Dry Bar was going to release, I was kind of going back and forth. Now, we're, I don't know how too into the weeds we want to get into. You get into the weeds and comedy for a second on this podcast? Sure, sure. Okay. So just just how my thought was, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be doing comedy full time since 2018. And I'm a, I'm a husband of 15 years. I'm a father of three. Uh, so we got mouths to feed and bills to pay. You yeah. understand? So there's no single comic living in a respectfully living with three roommates, just making it off or whatever. Right. right so right. I kept that. I mean, to answer your question, I, I'm putting this in perspective, like, OK, dry bar. I'm trying to continue to find ways to make revenue, et cetera. And I know serious and online, you know, spins. Right. Serious mm-hmm. XM getting 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 paid passive income, you know, is thought. So my thought process was, let me just go ahead and pull out 
just a classic 25, 30 minute set with the yeah. hits, uh, which was very similar to what I did with my album as well. It was kind of like a classic. It was a, it was a, like a, a milestone moment in my career slash business decision sure. to constantly be thinking about the back end of things. Now the second album, uh, maybe maybe a little more more loose, but uh, for these two right here off the jump. That was kind of the mindset. And I just kind of put together things I was enjoying doing, things that were older, things that were newer, yeah. and said, uh, let's have some fun with it. Yeah, I I, ha I had to watch your special twice because it's been so long since I've seen you perform that uh, your the way you deliver and your cadence, uh, you I missed some punches. I call it, kind of called a machine gun comedy, right? Uh, so yeah. you do, uh, you, you have your setup, whatever, you know, I'm getting older, you know, I'm getting older. I got And then the bit is, is, and there's these little drops. And like They're not, they're not tag, maybe taglines, but little drops and punches. And I'm laughing at the previous one and I missed that one. And I'm like, what did he just say? I'm like, I'm just going to watch it again. It was like watching it a second time was like a whole nother time. I was like, this is fantastic. Well, I, I appreciate that. That's, that's one of the, um, you know, at the beginning of your journey, as you're trying to figure out your voice and just kind yeah. of who you are on stage and how authentic you are on and off stage. And every comic's got that journey. There were like two or three things that really, for myself personally, I was trying to be cautious of and aware of. One, just wherever I was going to go, whatever stage, whatever the demographic, the background, I wanted to just make sure I was authentically me. Um, and and that, I'll speak for myself candidly. That was a journey for me um and, and for many different reasons uh, another piece was being aware of my speed and my cadence and things of that nature uh because when I first started uh you know one of the common uh what's the word comparisons right uh Kevin Hart you know or things of this nature here with like energy vibe which mm -hmm. which is you know whatever fine compliments yeah. you or whatever um but I wanted to make sure I had to check myself to make sure I wasn't just being a sponge. I wasn't just, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and once I just continued to get more comfortable in my skin and be like, all right, no, no, I'm being whoever I am off stage. I'm being that on stage. Then it just led to a freedom to just embrace that and just kind of hone it and just keep cooking. Yeah, you're free up there, man. You're super confident, laid back, not over acting or over selling your jokes you know what i mean but you have a yeah. slew of punches that come in these little machine gun patterns like it's a one of my favorites i had i have some notes here from watching it when i watched it a couple of times uh i wanted to hear more about the um the kid i think the kids were sleeping in the same bed and she chokes me uh, uh -huh. was hilarious to me i grew up the oldest of five so i know yeah. You yeah. know, I just i have a son you know just him and him and i right now so i don't have that experience but growing up just the fighting and the weird fighting just the oh. yeah like he yeah. he tried to rip my toe off i'm like what you know I, it's just absurd yeah i'm the oldest i'm the oldest of three boys myself so i definitely can relate with you on the uh older sibling piece there the weird fighting is very unique i don't know if you've ever thought you accidentally killed any of your siblings wrestling back in the day <laughs> but uh we've definitely had some moments uh and then being on the other side as a parent you know, seeing how they enjoy each other, but of course, squabble and, and bicker and this, that, and the other. That was one of the most uh, intriguing moments with my son and I when he says she chokes me uh, and, and goes on from there. So it and it's, it's interesting now, like my, the second hour that I'm getting ready to hopefully record and and, uh, and I'm building now is, you know, you just kind of this trajectory in this, in this timeline. If you stay yeah. with a comic, if you stay with an artist, you continue to see them get older and their family and situations and, and things like that as you journey with the the artists. That that's a great lead into my to 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 this question for me. And I, I ask most of most of the comedians I talk to on and off the air. Um what what's your writing? You know, some people dedicate time to write. Some people just write, maybe take a note in their phone when they're in the supermarket, they think of something or whatever, and then later on try it on stage. Are you a, are you a writer or you take it to the stage and work it? Yeah, yeah. I I am a writer um by just like like I journalism. Like I've been I've been I love writing. So I will on great days, great weeks, I sit down, set a timer and I write. And for clarity, 
it is kind of both in a sense of there's a bunch of premises that started from, oh, before I fall asleep, let me write this down. Oh, I'm at a stop sign. I just thought of something. Let me write this mm-hmm. down. But actually, like, sitting down, I I thoroughly enjoy, I have a Google Doc, which is pages and pages oh, wow. and pages of, of just, like, you know, word vomit. And so what I like to do is I like to set that timer. You know, what is it right now? I think I had... I think right now on my lines, it was just like being in a conversation with adults that you don't know anything about that happened a couple of days ago. And I was like the fourth wheel and they're just going back and forth about real estate and blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, mm, I don't know yeah. what I was saying. Cause yeah. you know, Texas has that refund. And I was like, I don't know what you, yeah. and so the thought goes down on the Google doc in the moment. And then I come back, you know, ideally days later where it's still fairly fresh set right. a timer and I just word vomit. I'm not trying to personally, you know, craft it very well into set up punch and right. act out here, whatever. It just kind of get thoughts down. And yeah. then I take that word vomit, which would be like five, eight, 12, 15 lines. For sure. Of For just sure. chaos. Yeah. And then I'll take it on there, hit a mic, hit a show, whatever the case may be. And then that's where the fun hopefully happens. And I'm also, I don't know about you. Uh, I love to kind of hear your thoughts, but I also have been really intentional, especially this second part, you know, 13 years here, I guess, of listening and, and, and I'll find probably once a weekend or something like that, I'll find like an hour and just kind of go back and listen to certain bits that I'm working on. And that's where the revising and editing for myself really happens. I have a hard time listening to myself, but it is a good practice. Like I dislike, I remember when my dry bar first came out, every place I went, friends family let's put it on and watch it no 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 so <laughs> here's I leave, a, have, my, have fun there's two different things i've been doing differently in the past couple of months for writing one of them is occasionally i'll wake up and do stream of conscious writing so it'll be literally wake up go to the bathroom water on the face and i just whatever set the timer 15 minutes 30 minutes right. you have to write it doesn't have to make sense It's just Mm -hmm. spilling. And I've gotten a few good bits out of that. You know, 90% of it's garbage. Me talking about wanting coffee and, you know, whatever, you know, just you have to write. And then the second thing is, and this is a little harder for me, is I'll think of a, I already know what the funny is. And now I got to back into it. I got to figure out, here's the punchline, you know, whatever. I saw, you know, grandma steal batteries from a supermarket. So that's the funny situation. So now how do I get into that? Yeah. And right that way. So, yeah. and and I'll go to some open mics here and there in in uh, Jacksonville from time to time. Not very often. I'll, most of the time, I have enough gigs where I can kind of squeeze sure. it in sure, the sure. middle. But it's rough to go to an open mic because it's you know I tell them, don't do credits, don't give me credits, just yeah. d- just bring me up. And uh, and a lot of times it's really I don't get I don't get what I'm looking for. I just want a reaction, good or bad. That's it. Yeah, and sometimes it's seven people who don't even know there's comedy happening. Yeah, yeah, those those mics are definitely the hardest there. We we've been fortunate, Atlanta. You know, I, I I'll fight with anybody, in it, but I, I firmly believe Atlanta's a top five comedy scene in the country. Mm-hmm. And so we're we're fortunate enough to have a good number of quality mics where you're gonna get not only a, a solid crowd but solid reactions to kind of really you know fine tune the material. So. When I'm at home, you know, tonight I'm staying in, but tonight hypothetically I could probably go hit two to three mics between yeah. eight to midnight and really take a, a a couple premises and try to, you know, work them out by the end of the day. Like, okay, there's a little meat here on the bone type of vibe. Yeah. And I don't even mind doing when I show up to these mics, they go, Oh, you want to close it out and do 20? I'm like, no, I want seven minutes or I want That's four it. minutes. That's all. Give me in and get out. And I want to go early. Okay. Yeah. I want to go early. Yeah. Yeah. I got I got three kids at home. I got to <laughs> go. Back. Um, one of my favorite lines in your show is if you, when you talk about getting older, it's so well written because it, it, nothing needs to be added or subtracted. Is uh, if you fall, you're using the cope, your copay. No, <laughs> that's a good one, man. That's like very succinct and very you you get it. You know what I mean? It, you, yeah. you sometimes you see comics over explain or or you know go into it too much, but that's absolutely perfect. I love that because I've used yeah, a lot of copays. I remember. Uh... You know, those throwaway lines, things you kind of say on the spot, impromptu. That's one of them for sure that I uh, that I remember listening to back. I was like, oh, let me let me try to stick it. And the first time when I kept trying it, I was adding too much. And then I recorded a set and I just kind of said it like you said it. 
and and you know it just kind of stuck from there but i remember yeah. that just kind of being a random just kind of as the as the as the statement and punch on's fading i threw it in there i was like huh and then we got it to the point where it was then yeah a lot of times that's that's a line that you forget that you said and you yep. tell someone in the back like if you're not recording like said, like, someone write that down i'm gonna forget that i'm gonna get that yeah and one thing yeah. I, I do here um you know in the writing world is over the last few years specifically, especially I've been traveling more <clears throat> and haven't been able to do as many mics in town. I've made a new system in my voice memos mm. where I'll put, um, so it's two pieces. I'll put it in, I have an emoji system of how just the set overall went. I don't listen to bad sets, period. Okay. That's just a preference. Uh, I lived it. No reason to go back to <laughs> it. So I've got, so if it's a bad set, it's an okay sign. If it was like a good set, you know, good to pretty good set, it's like a flex. And then if it was, you know, like, ooh, that was a, that was a good time, it's praise yeah. hands, right? Okay. <laughs> and so it's got to have the flex of the praise hands for me to even remotely listen to it. But in the in the line, I put specifically anything new in there. So if I'm looking for like right now, I'm working on like this like marriage chunk, which is right right now. I'm excited. It's like it's probably about twenty minutes long, where it's just like pound for pound just marriage material, which has been yeah. a goal this year for myself. And so there's two bits I'm working on specifically. And I just like, all right, boom, I set this line. Like, and so I'll just go back. So it's, it's helped me personally um, be more intentional with that revising editing section. Cause I can go specifically to the moment at hand and really just kind of make sure I'm listening back to it. So I don't miss any of those jewels that sometimes happen in, in, in the spot. Yeah. I need to use that voice memo feature on the phone more often. I've been recording my, a lot of, uh, camera uh mm -hmm. sets and um which is good because i'm getting people going hey uh that massage the bit you do about getting a massage uh there's new stuff in there and i'm and I, sometimes i don't recognize it yeah and yeah. i have to go back and listen i go oh, i need to add that in permanently so now a six right. minute bit is an eight minute bit exactly so on and so forth but how was your i assume much like everyone else your experience with the dry bar folks the team the treatment the 4k quality video you're getting was wonderful what what was your experience like top notch they treat you like a king and queen out there man oh yeah uh it was great just from the communication on the front end the hospitality the crowds the shows um i think i was with who was my host seth um taller seth guy. tippets tippets yeah, yeah 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 good dude he was great he was my um, host yeah yeah and so that was great and i actually had to i don't know how common this is uh, but you know, my grandma said, ask, and you know, it never hurts to ask, but I was like, yo, do y'all have anything else that weekend? I was in town. And so I got a chance to headline in Ogden. Um, I think I recorded Friday and I think I headlined Ogden, uh, wise guys Ogden on Saturday. And nice. A, a dope time. So it was just a really great weekend as a whole. Yeah. I heard those wise guys clubs are really nice, man. I've, I've heard, I'm trying to experience, but I've heard. <laughs> Yeah, there's like I think there's two or two or three of them and two in Utah, one in Vegas, maybe I think. Yeah, they just opened that Vegas one up. Yep. That looks good. Dang, dang. So um besides your dry bar, here's here's where I, I reached out to Damon recently after years of not uh, having touched base with him at all, because your face mm. kept showing up on my TikTok and not mm. not from your feed, from your commercials. <laughs> And so I reached out to you. I'm, I'm I'm just scrolling through and I had to scroll back. I'm like, I know, I yeah. know that guy. Yeah. It's a commercial. It's a little ad for uh, the weighted jump rope. Oh, the rhino rope. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, not the weighted, the, the thick rope. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The big yeah. thing. And there was one other one that I saw. And I, so I reached out to you and I was like, Hey man, I, I understand you do some stuff around that. And, and we talked a little bit, but that was really cool, man. That's you just kind of got into that by chance or, 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 yeah. Um, so before I went full time with uh, comedy, I was teaching full time. And so, boom, I go teaching full time. Then I jumped to comedy full time 2018. The world flips upside down three years right. ago. I go back into teaching. Um, and then at the end of 2022, I was like, all right, I got to get back, you know, to the to the first love. So I jumped back into comedy. It was slow. Right. This is this is the summer of 2022. Okay. And I was like, all right, I need, I need some more income. I need supplement income, you know, extra, extra streams, whatever. And I kept hearing about content creation, user generated content creation, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I, I, ain't, I don't know a ton about it. Right. It looks legit. I did my research and long story short, I jumped into it. And essentially at the end of the day, what it is, is that brands pay me to either 
create their ads, right? right? So that if you're scrolling TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever, every three, four, five scrolls is going to be an ad nowadays, right? right. And so, um, so either those or they'll also pay me, that's the paid side or the organic. A lot of brands know in 2023, our social media presence, small, medium, or large is essential, right? right? So I'll also either help them strategize or create content for their channels organically. Okay. And you. I'll just be honest with you, man. I started in June 4th. I unintentionally made $900 and I was like, oh, it's a wrap. And right, I, right, I, and right. I don't know what I'm doing. And I made that and yeah. it was cooking. So what, what I loved about it was because I was able to work, you know, one of the things, especially as different comics at different levels, as they're moving on their career and whatever case has happened, right. You know, there's that moment where all right, I got a nine to five and then it's like, I keep you got to kind of take the jump sooner or later. Yeah. You're missing out on gigs or whatever. You take that jump. And it's like, okay, you're kind of at a different phase. And so for myself personally, I was like, all right, I need some extra income, but I'm also, I don't want to slow down my travel because right. at this point for my career, traveling is the name of the game mm -hmm. in, a, in a large way. I, I have to leave to, to go make the money. Yeah. So I was like, um, I couldn't find a type that had that flexibility. So this was the sweet spot for me, man, where they would send me products or the best case is there's like a digital product and I could do it in a hotel room. I could do it on a cruise ship. I could right. do it wherever and still produce the content. So that, and so now, yes, yeah, I've been at it and, you know, I've been scaling. It's been great. It's really cool to see, to see that. And uh, it makes it made me do a double take. Like I said, you kind of scrolling through it. I'm like, ah, I know that face. Who, who yeah, is yeah. that face? <laughs> um, are you still doing, you have two podcasts or I, I know I saw on your site, you have one with your wife or had one with your wife, a podcast. Yeah. We, we paused on that one. Hopefully we'll bring it back um, sooner than later. Um, that was summing up with the summoners. I mean, it's, it's probably over a hundred episodes right now, for sure. We That's did a great season. Yeah, yeah. That was just marriage, relationships, fun, 30 minutes, get in and get out. Uh, and then I've got my other podcast I do with two other comedians uh, called Fourth and Ten. It's a comedy sports-ish podcast. It's really the sports podcast for non-sports lovers. Um, and yeah, that's been a good time. Dude, I'd love that. I got to go check that out. I'm a huge, yeah. huge, well, I'm a, you know, we, earlier you talked about being in a conversation with adults and you don't know what the hell they're talking about. And, and uh, whenever I'm in a gathering, I try to find comedians. I just try to find the funny person or a comic, which is probably one of the reasons I'm doing this podcast. Cause I'm, I'm essentially interviewing folks that headline the same venues. We're probably never going to see each other unless it's a mm -hmm. charity event or something. Mm -hmm. So selfishly, I want to talk to a comic, yeah. but um, yeah, doing podcasts and, and uh and and keeping in touch with folks is is tough when you all kind of go at the same pace or similar right. pace and and doing those right. venues. But I'm gonna I'm gonna check that one out. Um, what what's this thing with the Weather Channel? I did I saw mm -hmm. something you've done with the Weather Channel or are doing with the Weather Channel. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, I did a I did a couple of seasons of Weather Gone Viral, just classic, uh, talking head reaction. Uh, oh. type of videos yeah i did a few seasons with them which is dope every probably like every few months somebody will text me or my wife like oh i'm in a hotel room i'm watching your your husband on <laughs> on weather channel so yeah i did i probably did three seasons before 2020 and then they wanted to bring it back i probably need to think you actually remind them i need to reach back out to them see if they're they're trying to bring it back but that was really a fun opportunity for sure yeah yeah and you have your youtube channel of course better dad Yep. Um, yep. That's been great. They're just trying to, you know, as a dad at the end of the day, you know, I know shucks, my, my oldest now he's 13 and my youngest is seven. Um, so 13 years ago, becoming a father, I wasn't personally seeing a ton of content information, one specifically for dads. And even in general, I felt like we could just do more and do better. Right. And, and I'll be honest with you, I take pride in trying to be the best dad I can be. And so I was like, you know, I don't know everything, but I feel like I can help a, help a future dad or current dad out. Right. And so that content has just been fun uh, for sure to make because it, you know, big picture, if you're taking care of kids, I feel like there's something for everybody. Yeah. But then also specifically, I'm like, yo, no dads, like, let's have more stuff for us as well. Yeah, I I feel that I got my son is seventeen, and I feel like I feel like at, even at this age, I'm teaching him how to talk. Like he'll come into a room and he'll go, 
uh, I can get 15 bucks for dinner. I go, are you? Was that a question with from for me? <laughs> right, right. And it wasn't that's not a question. There's no question mark. It's he just it was a statement. I can get 15 bucks for dinner. No. <laughs> a greeting, a little small talk, flatter yeah. me, something, brother. How are you, father, who provides the home right and there, food? Sure. Got a new hat, dad? <laughs> <laughs> Butter me up, brother. Something. <laughs> God. And uh and finally. Uh, you just filmed something for Amazon Prime with the Killer Bees. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And uh, that was dope. My first time working with Killer Bees, they reached out to me, um, I guess, a couple months ago or something like that. It actually went really quick. And uh, to be fully honest, I don't know. I, I know what they're trying to do, but I don't really know what they're trying to do. Right. But they're like, yo, we're doing clean comedy. We're trying to help take it to another level. Um, and, you know, they've got some big plans, which is exciting. And so I got a chance to go down to Huntsville at a great club, stand up Huntsville and worked with a bunch of dope comics. Was know, it uh, a bunch of comics doing smaller sets or was it um, a long? Uh, yeah, we all did. Um, it was seven comics, six comics doing 15s. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, 300 plus people on a Wednesday yeah. night. And just everybody crush. Just a great, those great type of nights. Yeah. Damon, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it cake when you get hired for something and they're like, just do 15? Like, oh, oh. Yes. oh brother. <laughs> say less. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, I'll do that a lot of times with private gigs. Like I do a lot of uh, golf and country clubs hmm. um, all over in charity events and fundraisers and stuff like that. And they'll, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of times they don't know what they're booking. Exactly. They don't know what they're exactly. doing, how to set it up. So I go, look, I need an attentive audience and a microphone. Those are the only two things I need. I need no TVs. On, I, that's all I need. Focus. And I'll, I'll take them for a ride. How much time you want me to do? Uh, I go, they go um, about an hour during dinner. I'm like, all right, time out. Slow down. Slow yeah. down, buddy. So here's the problem. And then anyway, I'll end up negotiating and they think they're saving money, but I'm just reducing my time. Mm -hmm. And I'll go instead of this, you know, how about I just do 30 after dinner or 45 or whatever, and I'll we can take off a couple hundred bucks or whatever it is. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And negotiate that way. And then, you you know, you don't some people just go into blindly like oh, I, I did so terrible. And it's bad for all of us when that happens. Everybody. It's bad for all of us, because when they try to do an hour without trying to help the the person hiring you set up a, a successful event, they think comedy in general is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. They won't hire it's, comedians after that. The, the setup for private, just any type of space that is not specifically a, a, a known comedy, common comedy, com, common comedy there space. You there you go. It has to, it needs support. It's going to yeah. need a little bit of help, a little bit of direction. It's like, all right, well, we've got, you know, we're just going to do it all the lights on while everybody's kind of walking around. Slow. No, wait, no, no that's not. You're not helping me or yourself, literally you, yeah. the person, because you're probably the, the the manager or the special events coordinator yeah. or whatever else. You know what I mean? Type of thing. It's like, let's let's get it going. I can do it at these specific times. Yes. I can tell you it's probably not the best to go right after the um uh I've done too many after the rest in peace moments of the part the, the <laughs> banquet. It's like, all right, yes, what are, <laughs> what are we doing here? Okay, this isn't the moment. Dude, I did a show in Daytona recently, and there was a fundraiser. It was in a neighborhood. The you know, HOA was raising money for this cancer camp for kids, right? Mm -hmm. Before the set, they go, hey, the guy goes up there, does his thing. We're just trying to show you this little video. We've raised $20,000 this year for this camp for cancer kids. And they show this literally four to five minute video. Kids, you know, bald with the air tubes and in bed and kind of using a walker and the thing so the entire 300 people are 300. dead i hear sniffles sniffles of crying <laughs> and then the video drops the lights go up a little bit and they go all right and now the comedy of danny johnson my first line when i get up there is is uh uh, you have any other uplifting videos we can watch uh, I, I lost a puppy when i was seven i think i have that on tape if you want to watch that and Mama. it killed it did well it killed luckily right right come on. right <laughs> come on that day <laughs> but also i've told people i've told um event coordinators you know that that don't have a budget i'm like i could find you a 200 comedian to do an mm -hmm. hour if you want you know what i mean yeah, i can't like, i can 
I'm not coming, but I can help you find somebody. Sure, sure. They're like, it's a thousand people. Um, you know, it's eight hundred dollars a plate, and we don't have a budget for comedy. So, how about two hundred dollars for an hour? I'm like, well, I, I can get you somebody, but I got you. I got you. Know. you. It won't be me. If my a- name won't be on the brochure, but it. <laughs> but there are guys and gals that'll do it, man. They'll do it for or whatever. But hundred percent. Um. Well, hey, man, I won't keep you much longer. Uh. What's your uh? What do you want to plug? What's your social media? Is you just your name, or is it a variation of? Uh yeah, Instagram, TikTok is where you primarily can find me. Damon Junior Two, D A M O N J R, the number two. Damon Junior Two. It's where I post clips, where I post my dates when I'm touring, things of that nature. Very cool. And you're on the you're um on the ships from time to time as well, right? Yeah, from time to time, I'm working with Carnival. That's been a good experience, um, here and there. So, um, just trying to just trying to build it. I'm getting ready to. This is what as we record. This is July. So. I'm trying to ideally um, at least record my my next special probably around between October and November. So just trying you think to- you'll do that on the ship? Is that is that good enough audio quality on the ship to record, or is are you going to wait for a club? Uh, I'm already in talks with a few different people here. I okay. did think about that. I was talking with my one of my best friends about trying to partner with Carnival because that would just be a dope experience. I know mm. um, what's the girl Eliza. You know who's been crushing it for many years. She did a um, a navy like battleship carrier or something a couple years ago for one of her specials. So the the uniqueness of the setting was already cool. Um, this one's kind of already locked in mentally where it might be. Um, but I, I I have been thinking about that one in the future for sure. Is that Eliza Schlesinger? Schlesch- yeah, 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 big dog. She's great, man. She is yeah, a big yeah, dog. She- Yep. Uh, but yeah, it would be interesting to see if Carnival even had the capability because you want to capture the you want to mic the audience too. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. I've talked with a couple people on like production people on the team. Um, so I think they because they do some very interactive games and things like that. So it would just mostly be about like you know collaborating on potentially the vibe and feel right because they've got the nice theater, they've got background and design. Like we could. We're talking hypothetical, like it could really become, you know, a great yeah. experience for sure. For sure. Well, look, check out uh, Damon's uh, Dry Bar special, Chocolate in the Sun. You'll have to find out why the title is that. I know why it's like that. Um, and all his social media, you got your podcast, your YouTube, your, you'll see him on TikTok and other stream, uh, streaming platforms in your commercials. Uh, just know you better watch that commercial in full when you see him. But man, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate you stopping by and and, uh, look forward to running into you in the future, man. Appreciate it, Danny. All right, brother.